You get that belly moving, son, or you're out. Um, I was hoping and praying this weekend that Benjamin Pepino, the low-hanging fruit, the easy content for this channel, I was hoping and praying that he would do a video on this thing called HR1, which I'll explain in a second. I was, but please, Christ, do this because it'll be so stupid and so funny. And he delivered and then some. He delivered times 10 because this is one of the stupidest things I've ever seen and heard. Funding procedure. HR1 is a complete overthrow of the federalist structure with regard to voting and is an attempt, it is an attempt to backfill American voting law so as to make it easier for people to commit voter fraud and irregularity. That's what HR1 is. <laughs> okay, I can't wait to hear the support for that. It's going to make it easier to do voter fraud, which there's basically no evidence for voter fraud. Like it just doesn't, voter fraud just doesn't happen according to like every study that's been done on it. But, but now it's going to happen because of this, and also this overthrows the federalist structure of voting. Uh, okay, cool. So let's hear it. Let's hear his support for this, these shocking revelations. Here we go. So what is in HR1? What is in this, this massive new voting bill that Democrats no. are pushing forward? No. According to National Review, it would be an understatement. Wait, wait a second. You're just going to read an article? No, no one could be that lazy. Really? To describe H.R. 1 as a radical assault on American democracy, federalism, and free speech is actually several radical— You know, I read a bunch of this thing, and then I read a bunch of interviews and blah, blah, blah. This guy just pick, coughs up one article from a dumb right-wing toilet paper that no one even pays any attention to anymore, and that's it. Against a pre-existing list of registrations. H.R. 1 mandates states provide same-day registration and— allow people to change their name and address on the rolls at the polling place on election day, then forbid states from treating their votes as provisional ballots that can be checked later, which is a recipe for massive voter fraud. It mandates... How, how's that? ...states online registration without adequate safeguards against hackers. Okay, so he just we, we just move right on from that. No evidence, no support, just like, this is a recipe for voter fraud. Well, there's no... Voter fraud doesn't really happen. Yeah, but... Yeah, come on, man. But, yeah... Shut up, dude. This next part might be my favorite part. This is this is beautiful. This is so good. This is so just like I just I I do, I have zero respect for my audience to read this to them. Which is a recipe for massive voter fraud. It mandates online registration without adequate safeguards against hackers. It mandates automated reg automated registration of people who apply for unemployment, Medicaid, Obamacare, and college, or who are coming out of prison. Right. So basically, anybody who's government dependent is going to be automatically registered to vote, which you can see why Democrats are pushing this. The bill. <laughs> Anybody who's registered for Obamacare or was in prison, they automatically get to vote. They're automatically registered to vote. Under the automatic voter registration provision, eligible citizens who provide information to state agencies, including state departments of motor vehicles, or public universities would be automatically registered to vote unless they opt out of doing so. In other words, <laughs> he picked the ones he doesn't like. So if you go to a public university or if you uh, go to get a driver's license, you're registered. Say, you know what? Yes, save me the time. I don't want to go. Oh, hey, I want to vote. But you know what? I really miss being like, did I register? Did I remember to waste uh, you know, 30 minutes of my time that I could have been, you know, watching Deadwood or some stupid crap. Um, did I waste that time filling out some paper that I shouldn't even have to fill out in the first, first place? I hope I wasted that time. He took out the part about jail, about jail and Obamacare, because he knows his dolt audience will, like, get foamed up about that for some reason. He left out that it's anybody who has a, basically any contact with the government. They'll use that to register you to save you time. <laughs> and even in the case of jail, I mean, you, you probably know this, but if you're a felon, let's say you're a convicted felon, you get out of jail, you get, you, and in some states, you even keep retain your right to vote while you're in prison. But in pretty much every state you leave, you get your right to vote back. And in that case, you would be automatically registered to vote. And he's like, these prisoners. So do you think anybody who went to prison shouldn't be able to vote? Because that would be the only thing that would make sense based on what you're saying. What he's really saying is jail bad. Duh, jail bad. Those people went to jail. They're bad. 
and his reverse bell curve, you know, either 13 or uh, 10 years past dead audience are like, yeah, duh, jail, jail bad. Duh, jail bad. Jail, they went to jail. Bad. They're probably, they're probably those, those kind of people. But yeah, uh, actually under the law, if those people, once they leave jail, they get their voting rights back. So why wouldn't you just automatically register them? I don't think you heard me. I said jail bad, sir. Jail bad. I don't think you heard. Um, sir, I don't think you heard me when I choked my pants with brown while screaming jail bad. God. And may not require notarization or witness to signatures. States are compelled to permit ballot harvesting so long as the harvesters are not paid per ballot. So Democrats can just pay per hour and you just go pick up a bunch of Democrat ballots. <laughs> I got like, I, I honestly do, and I'm not even saying this as a joke, I kind of admire how much of a shameless grifter this guy is. Just, and not only shameless, but like a zero effort lazy grifter. And I'm just going to play this again just so you can hear what he said. States are compelled to permit ballot harvesting so long. Okay, states are compelled to permit ballot harvesting. Ballot harvesting is a pejorative, by the way. It's meant to sound scary. Um, 26 states, I think, uh, already allow this. <laughs> Ball when they say ballot harvesting, they mean like old people who can't leave their house or people who for some reason can't get, you know, they have an absentee ballot and they can't turn it in. It's like they can say, hey, uh, friend, uh, bring this in, please. Or there's some like local community group that's like, we're going to get all these people's ballots who are too old, decrepit fossils who are, you know, they're 20 years past dead, these people. Uh, we're going to go get their ballots for them so that they can still vote. <laughs> that's ballot harvesting. <laughs> and again, just like with normal voting, um, basically zero evidence for fraud on this. Uh, you know, I mean... <laughs> It's like, sometimes I'm like, am I, am I actually the lazy one, like, making fun of this guy? As long as the harvesters are not paid per ballot. So Democrats can just pay it per hour and you just go pick up a bunch of Democrat ballots. There's no party listed in this law. They're not, he just said, well, Democrats can do that. But, but. Yeah, like, any, any, any party can. <laughs> and it, it either, oh, well, Democrats can do that. But, but. Does it say, do you think, if you read this law, do you think it said, it, it would say only Democrats can go and pick up uh, vo vo uh, absentee ballots from fossils who can't leave their house? Only Democrats. <laughs> so stupid. This is so tragically stupid. This video has 140,000 views. And just in just like a month. And uh, he's... This is like the most low effort, lazy version of lying. Like, I'm just going to barf up this stupid article from a dead uh, paper, dead magazine, and not even look into it at all. Because I know my viewers are so, they're just so uh, checked out that they don't care. These idiots don't care. These dummies, these dummies will eat anything. I'm Ben Pepino. Now give me more of this. You know what? Actually, I take it back. I think this next part might might be my favorite because he's clearly doing a little improv. He clearly did not read this. Maybe he didn't even read this article. He's just like, oh, I know they're going to take a dump. I know they're going to take a dump on this bill because we, you know, I mean, it's part of his, his whole thing. We want is we want to make voting harder <laughs> and really maybe not even have voting, just have people who pay him and who have lots of money and are oil billionaires and all this stuff, just basically directly choose what goes on in the world. But, uh, so he doesn't really care, but this part might be my favorite in just that I think he, he might even catch himself doing this little improv, and he's like, I think he might have, he might register that what he's saying is pretty stupid. Here we go. Must accept voter registrations from 16 year olds, even though they can't vote before turning 18. The bill shifts the job of signing. <laughs> so this bill, it allows 16 and 17 year olds, 16 and 17 year olds. Can you put it? 
16 and se- children. It's letting ch- so the legal voting age is 18. It allows 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register to vote so that when they turn 18 they can vote. And I do have a problem with this because what kind of a nerd 16 year old would do that? I will personally give him a head first into the into that. If you're out there, you're getting your head in the toilet, toilet, toilet. We really want to do Ben Pepino doesn't like this because he really wants to d- discourage nerdy 16 year olds who are really excited to vote when they turn 18. I don't want kids teaching my cowards. I don't want cowards teaching my kids. That's when you know somebody's doing improv is when they're like, I'm going to emphasize these words, 16 and 17 year olds to pre-register to vote for when they turn 18. (laughs) What I just read is the most like kind of mundane, you know, whatever, nothing, a no brainer thing. Yeah, of course. You want to pre-register to vote before you turn 18 so that when you turn 18, you can vote. Yeah. But if I read it like that, 16 and 17 then it seems very upsetting for some reason. And again, my audience are just total, you know, uh, just id. They're just, you know, they're just human id. Um, They don't, they won't know. They're too busy choking their pants with brown. So they don't know. Somebody even in the comments, (laughs) 649 upvotes on this. 16 year olds. I don't know what I want to do with my life. Democrats. This person should be allowed to vote. (laughs) Hi, I'm a Ben Pepino fan, and I heard that 16-year-olds are going to be able to vote. So what did I do to fight this? I took an outrage dump in my pants. I recorded it. I recorded it with a field recorder, H4N Zoom, and that's the audio I got. This This is a pretty funny one, too. Here we go. Elections are overridden. And H.R. 1 takes the drawing of congressional districts out of the hands of elected state legislatures who have done the job since the founding and turns them over to, quote unquote, independent commissions. That's one way to put it. Another way to put exactly what he just said is gerrymandering. (laughs) So it tries to stop gerrymandering. Why not just say it tries to stop gerrymandering? (laughs) New disclosure rules would treat huge amounts of speech and advertising as if they were campaign contributions. This would require donors to say the AARP, to be identified as supporters of any candidate if the AARP demands the candidate keep a promise to protect Social Security. No. 501c4s would be required to disclose their donors. No. I mean, it's a mess. It's a complete mess. And this is what's being pushed forward by the Biden administration. So moderate. (laughs) It's a mess. It's a complete mess. And what I was just talking about, by the way, is... Dark money into the uh, government, basically. It's at least a a step in the direction of less government corruption. This is pretty funny, too, just to add another little punchline to this. This reporter, you might have heard of Jane Mayer. She's a reporter for The New Yorker. She uh, somehow got this uh, leaked recording I'll just read you the subheadline. On, on a leaked conference call, leaders of dark money groups and an aide to Mitch McConnell expressed frustration with the popularity of the legislation, even among Republican voters. They're talking about the thing that Pipino is just talking about. And I'll just play you some little clips from this call because they're trying to figure out how to spin this as a bad thing, as is Pipino, as is Pipino. And this call is it's pretty funny. This is pretty funny. So let's just listen to some pieces of this. And this is from a presentation. So this guy's giving like a sort of Zoom call presentation to these uh, billionaires who like to like uh, who like to flush lots of money into the uh, government toilet. Here we go. That you have to understand that most people have never heard of the phrase HR one. Um, so over sixty percent of people just had no idea what we were talking about when we said, "Have you ever heard of HR one?" However, when presented with a very neutral description of H.R. 1, people were generally supportive. Um, And the the most worrisome part, which Grover mentioned at the very beginning of his presentation, is that conservatives were actually as supportive as the general public was. 
was when they read the neutral description of HR1. <laughs> What? What? Oh! What? Uh Uh-oh. This is going to take some... This is going to take some... It's going to take a little bit more effort than lazily reading something from a a magazine that only 100-year-olds read, which is what Ben Prepostino was doing. I'll put a link to this, but I just love listening to this guy. We ran, you know, a surface-level messaging max diff exercise where we pitted messages... He's like, I'm doing my little Zoom office Zoom call, and we do we do this, and we A B test it, blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, we're gonna really try to figure out ways to make it harder for poor people to vote. <laughs> I'm just doing my work business. I'm just doing my work. Brain go bye bye. I'm just doing my work. This is my work, my job. That's what I do. I'm trying to make for these weird billionaire lunatics, these absolute uh, goofballs, these decrepit grave robbers. I'm trying to figure out how to help them fit, make it so poor people can't vote and make it harder for them. That's my job. <laughs> I have a job. Uh, the, the don't on the side is don't get into a fight uh, in HR1 where you, where you engage with the other side, where they have the talking points. HR1 stops billionaires from buying elections. Um, unfortunately, we found that that is a winning message um, for both, um, you know, the general public and also conservatives. Um, you know, that simple message, but far and away was. Re- I like how he says, unfortunately, unfortunately, they don't like the idea of billionaires buying elections, unfortunately. What? What? But Ben Pepino will help our little that little creep. We'll get out there and tap dance for it. He's still, he's still on YouTube? Yeah, he's still out there. He gets like 140,000 uh, views per video on a bad day. What? He's still, people still watch that? People still watch that little piece of turd? I thought, some, I thought maybe he was flushed by now. No, he's still out there, still kicking. This is kind of amazing, too. Just doing my job. You know, I'm giving this guy a hard time. He is just doing his job. Guy's just trying to make some money, I guess. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't get off the hook. But um, just doing my job. Here we go. And I know this won't be intellectually satisfying to a lot of people on this call who really want to engage in this fight. Um, the message that seemed to work, right, was simply that Congress shouldn't be focusing on this right now. We, Our country has much bigger fish to fry <laughs> at this moment, which I think... <laughs> So, hey, um, you know, anything that's even like a little baby step in making our uh, election process a little, slightly, slightly less corrupt, um, we, do, we really don't want that. Just say to people, we got better things to do than this, than trying to make our elections less corrupt. Oh, like what? I don't know. Get out of them off my property. I'm not on your property. Ah, whatever. Then you walk away. All that that I just said, that we found that to be the most effective message. Just say, ah, oh, whatever, and then walk away. We, our country has much bigger fish to fry at this moment, which I think we can all agree with. Um, you know, and so the two examples we used were healthcare and the economy, right? You know, there's still an unbelievable amount of people out of work in the country. Congress should focus on getting people back to work, not on, you know, these kind of niche donor disclosure type of uh, endeavors we're working on. Hey, let's worry about people getting back to work. Let's not worry that people are just fire hosing money, just totally corrupting uh, the election process. Let's not wor- the, he. <laughs> so the whole the whole idea what he's saying here is just let's just different we. We're not going to win this one if we're at all honest. Let's just try to differ, be like, we. you don't want to look at that. You don't want to look at donor, donor disclosure. We want these people to keep secret who are, who are toileting all this money into, the, into elections. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. We found it very effective to actually just pee your pants while you're talking about this because then they look down. At the, especially if you're wearing khakis, you get that stain, you know, that dark, it gets really dark. And then they were like, what are we talking about again? And then you run away. We found that to actually be the most effective. 
I mean, it goes on and on and on, and it's completely crazy, obviously. But um, a more nuanced discussion of this HR1 thing would be that it's not really addressing some of the root problems. Like, why do oligarchs exist, maybe? Why are they going to keep trying, even if you do pass this, why will they immediately go to work uh, ruining it and making even doing even worse things? Those would be the probably closer to the real questions, but it's always fun to take a dump on Pepino because he's an idiot and he's, you know, just trick stupid people all day and and mi he probably sells blue chew on his channel too. No, no. So just a little bit of on him because he's a creep, a cretin and a creep and he's still on YouTube. <laughs> people still watch that. People still watch it because, you know, why not? Why not? It's very good. Very good source of news. He's a good young man. And guys, if it's Monday, if you're watching this on Monday and Wednesday, I got to do an afternoon stream at some point because a lot of people are like, I'm in Switzerland or whatever, and I can't watch. Well, too bad. Go ski or something, you creeps. Um, if it's Monday or Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, Year of Our Lord, I'll do a stream and I will see you in there. Bye, 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 bye. Hey everybody, and thanks so much for watching this video. Like all the other YouTube and podcast perverts, I now have a Patreon. Here you can get daily access to the audio-only feed. And every week on this Patreon, I'm uploading two exclusive Patreon-exclusive shows. They're like real shows, more produced, more edited. One of them is a behind-the-scenes show where I reveal all the secrets and YouTube scams that I'm doing. And the other one, I just reveal my innermost dark, cringe secrets, as well as deep dive video essays and more. And at the top level, you can even become a producer of the show and get your name handwritten, hand art, art, hand drawn at the end of every episode. So if that's something that you are interested in, um, check it out on Patreon. Uh, I'll put a link in the, what is the thing called in the, the description, I guess. So thank you so much, even if you don't. Thanks for watching this video. I know it's hard to get through these things, but um, I appreciate you. This show would be absolute garbage without the producers. 007X. Yeah. And William Michael McTie. Rue Kazoo. Kazoo. Shannon Bad Barbie Williams. Anna. <laughs> ben Kosky. Ass McBlast. McBlast. E. Gregory Hutto. Scott, let me tell you something, no castle. Re, re, rerun 64. 64. Mr. Feeny. 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 Jamie and I may have a disagreement with Sam Cedar's pause button. Pause button. Jenny Hart. Hey, Jenny Hart, it's me. Oh, she just ignored me. Winter the Muscular. Ethan Weaver. Weaver. Vince. Barbosa, he is pure ideology at its purest. Crouching Tiger flushing toilets. Elias Christo. The guy from the hamburger train. Cece LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Nez. Nez. Interlinks. Victor Sonny Duran. Kyle, high level ideas. Hopper, Irvine, Albert Ellers, Ood, Kitty Hooch. Hi, I'm Kitty Hooch. Abby, I don't want cowards teaching my kid green. Tristan, Dom, Dom, Dominic, Guzman, 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 Jane Spade, Jessica, a lot of problems stepping off. King Friday, day, <laughs> Laura, Campbell. Rajawa, Nefatsu Gustav Van Betten, 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 Camilla, Yo, Yo, Young Slampy, Brian Hernandez, CS. Hey, is that CS? I don't know. Oh, wait, yeah, it is CS. Okay, great. Thugs and Kisses denigrates your dude. He's denigrating that dude. Blistered Thumb, Thumb, Thumb. Brie, Brie, Brie Gutierrez. Brie Gutierrez. Pick, pick, pixels green. Pick, pick, pick green. 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 Old man Shia. Shia. And our favorite name so far. Hard Farter. I hope you're okay, Hard Farter. That sounds... The muscular class. Like a problem. 
to be honest. <laughs> and a very special thanks to Mr. Gorth. Micah G. Mike Mork Calypso. Roberto Vera. Who's that? What? Oh, it's Carl Hochmuth. Or Hochmuth. I don't know, Carl. Tell me how to say it. Love you! Terza. Terza. And don't cancel me for... I'm just reading a name, okay? Tardmaster. Tardmaster. Stealion Annihilate. Annihilate. And special guest, Stabster Bait. Kevin Jigaleski. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's Mac. It's Mac. You know it's Mac. You can tell it's him. Krill Will. And we got D-Pad Chad. Mm-hmm. Burn Dubuel. Jake T. Jake T. Sebastian Delgadillo. Charlotte Glass. CEO of the muscular, the muscular class. class. Beth Van Diver. Diver. I'm sorry about that, Beth. You know I love you. Ray Anthony Cox. Eden Joy. Derek Stoker. Apollo Crow. Liz. Martin Lee. Chelsea G. Derek Jesus Christ Wilson. Matt Rowe. Thank you to these beautiful, gorgeous, muscular, soaked up showering probably 10 to 11 times a day producers 